This is Twit. Spectre and Meltdown. Now, first of all, there's a lot of misinformation again, j- just because I think editors are rushing to get to their, their pages online. And so they're talking about Spectre and Meltdown together when we know on this podcast they're they're, they're related more in time than they are in nature. So Meltdown is the problem which is easy to resolve and may cause a performance hit or may not, depending upon how recent your chipset is. But significantly, it its resolution, in no event, requires a firmware update for, for your chips from Intel and AMD never had a problem because their chips were not vulnerable to this. So the 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 reason I bring this up is that Intel has just reversed its so-called advice to all of its OEMs saying stop 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 <sighs> patching anybody's firmware uh we made a mistake in in last week's firmware and i don't remember if we touched on it last week but there were it was it it's hard to t- to nail them down they're saying something as fuzzy as may cause reboot issues or may make your system reboot more often it's like wait a minute more often than never more often <laughs> more often than what <laughs> you know you know, in other words, this causes a catastrophic crash oh, of your system, but man. they don't want to use those words. Yeah. So yesterday, the newsroom of Intel sent out, uh, quote, as we start the week, I wrote, writes in first person, this newsroom Mr. persona. Anonymous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to provide an update on the reboot issues we reported January 11th. Okay, so that was 12 days ago, but 11 days ago yesterday. We have now identified the root cause for Broadwell and Haswell platforms and made good progress. They're, they're, Leo, they're making good progress. Wow, wow. Uh, in developing a solution to address it over the weekend. And well, I, I, you can just imagine there's a, a lot of late nights over there at Intel over the weekend, <laughs> we began rolling out an early version of the updated solution to industry partners for testing. Oh, so everybody was awake and we will make a final release available once that testing has been completed, okay, but not now, not yet, based on this, we are updating our guidance for customers and partners. We recommend that OEMs, cloud service providers, system manufacturers, software vendors, and end users stop deployment. Oh, my God. Of current versions <laughs> and those of As, you who've already installed it oh gee we're sorry oh and actually that's happening dell has announced in following the guidance that they will be offering previous versions of the firmware uh, immediately uh, because like to just because now intel has scared everybody that reboots might happen any minute. So this is, though, but it's Haswell and Broadwell systems. It's not Coffee Lake, KB Lake. It's not the more modern systems. It's older Oh, systems. no, it's, no, no, oh, no. It is? They, oh. haven't, they haven't gotten to those yet. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's everything. So, it's okay, so <laughs> they're saying stop deployment of current versions as they may introduce, get this again, higher than expected reboots. What? Well, okay, like I'm not expecting any, so <laughs> I guess a reboot, which is unexpected, well, which you didn't, you know, control alt delete, you know, to make happen or pull a plug out or something, you know, anyway, may reboot. And they say other unpredictable system behavior, 
Now, by its very nature, unpredictability is something you are working to avoid in your processors. So, yeah. Uh, then they say, for the full list of platforms, see the intel.com security center site, which is very busy lately. Um, okay, meanwhile, the technical side, that was Mr., you know, I'm giving you an update from the, you know, <laughs> from the coffee room. Uh, here we have the, this title, you know, this page is titled properly, Speculative Execution and Indirect Branch Prediction Side Channel Analysis Method. So you know you're getting something a little more meaty than, you know, ooh, <laughs> more than expected reboots. Okay, so this was updated on yesterday. We have now identified the root cause of the reboot issue impacting Broadwell and Haswell platforms and made good progress in developing a solution to address it. Still, they're making progress. They haven't arrived yet. Based on this, we are updating our guidance for customers and partners. So you can tell that Mr. Press Guy basically pulled his language from the, the technical guys. Same recommendations to everybody. Stop deployment across the board of current versions on the below platforms, they write, as they may introduce higher than expected reboots, blah, blah, blah. We also ask that our industry partners focus efforts on testing early versions of the updated solution for Broadwell and Haswell we started rolling out this weekend so we can accelerate its release. In other words, we don't really know. Apparently, we're, we're unable to decide that this is fixed, so we need everybody to try it and let us know if we're getting warmer. Did, did your unexpected reboots slow down? Oh, uh, then, they, then they write, we expect to share more details on timing later this week. That is this current week. For those concerned about system stability. Oh, yeah, I, I guess there are people who are not concerned. But for those who are concerned about system stability, while we finalize the updated solutions, we are also working with our OEM partners on the option to utilize a previous version, like you know, one of the ones that worked, of microcode that does not display these issues. Right. We've no one ever uses the word bug anymore. We don't have bugs, we have issues and more frequently than expected reboots. Okay, but in the butt, they say, fixes, it no, it no longer crashes, but it removes the variant to specter mitigations. In other words, of course, you're, you're vulnerable again, but boy, you're able to stay online, which is handy. This would be delivered via a BIOS update, which might be called a down date in this case, uh, and would not impact mitigations for variant one, which is not a problem, which did not require the, the firmware update, and variant three, Meltdown, which never had any of these problems. They say, we believe it is important for OEMs and our customers to follow this guidance. In other words, qu quickly run away back to a BIOS that worked earlier firmware for all the specified platforms listed below as they may demonstrate higher, oh, here we are again, than expected reboots and unpredictable system behavior. The progress we have made in identifying a root cause for Haswell and Broadwell, get this, Leo, will help us address issues on other platforms. Oh, we're going to learn <laughs> why this didn't work for Haswell and Broadwell. And that'll help us fix the other ones. Please be assured, they say, we are working quickly to address these issues. So here it is. The guidance applies to at least some of the processors from Intel's last several generations of chips with affected models in the Broadwell, Haswell, Coffee Lake, KB Lake, mm -hmm. Sky Lake, and Ivy Bridge families. But yeah, sir. they said yeah. continue to patch the uh, newer ones, which uh, to me, I, 
Yeah. You Certain know, Red, lines... Hat, Red Hat may have given them the warning on this because they pulled their update last week saying ah. we're no longer providing microcode to address Spectre variant 2 due to instabilities that are right. introduced causing customer systems not to boot. Yeah. L minor problem. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Certain lines, they write, are affected more than others. I mean, this is all so weird and murky. For example, only Ivy Bridge data center slash workstation, okay, data center slash workstation processors are included. But chips from most recent consumer lines also appear to be impacted. So that sentence doesn't seem self consistent. Intel says that it's identified the issue behind the unexpected reboots on Broadwell and Haswell processors and is working toward releasing an update that, that addresses the exploits without causing the issue. But the same problems have been seen on Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, Skylake, and Kaby Lake processors too. Intel says it's actively working on developing solutions for those platforms as well. So, bottom line is um Nobody should. I, okay, so if you have not installed the firmware, don't. God, um, I just got to push. Apple's pushing out an update right now. Yeah, but and, Apple did not get bit by this because they didn't do the microcode patches initially. Right. Um, I have my main laptop and two others, two Dells and a and a Lenovo. I've updated them all. I've been using them, um, and none of them have rebooted. I haven't any reboots either, unexpectedly. So, uh, you know, I, I, so I guess the advice would be if you, I mean, it's better to be secure than not. Although, remember, the the biggest problem meltdown that was that is the only one that we've ever seen even a proof of concept for isn't a problem that got solved just with a windows update no my no firmware updated update needed specter is a known problem but much more difficult to exploit and and for none of this have we ever seen an in the wild exploit and it's not remote anyway it's something gets into your computer and is able to peek across process boundaries and it's not clear that windows is good about maintaining those anyway for an individual i mean you know d debuggers function by deliberately reaching into another processor and sticking its hands in there so that you so that it can see what's going on and help a developer to to like fix broken code so the big concern had always been in the cloud where you inherently had a single executing block of hardware that could have many different users sharing the hardware so that and so it was cross user boundary was the concern but on your own machine you're your own user unless you get some i mean theoretically you could get some malware in there that could get up to some monkey business but no one has seen that yet so advice so our advice would be if you have not updated your firmware, don't bother. You know why create problems for yourself? Um, it's 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 harder to fix your BIOS if you have a non-booting machine than it is, you know, because now now nowadays you're able to update your BIOS typically from within the OS. You just download the app and say yes and yes I'm sure and yes I'm really sure and then it says, okay, be sure not to kick out the power cord for the next minute while we reflash your BIOS and it'll be all fixed. So if you end up with an unbootable system that, you know, undoing that requires, you know, booting from, from a thumb drive and making sure, and, you know, adjusting your BIOS to boot if you can and so forth. I mean, t potentially you could brick yourself. So that's not good. So if you're, if everything's fine, it's not, and you have updated your firmware like I have and you have, Leo, and nothing is rebooted, then we're probably okay. Yeah, I um, mean, I just checked uh, on my Lenovo uh, T470S, and there's no updates. So 
I don't right. know if Lenovo is rolling back those updates at some point or what. They're well, this doing. has just happened. So, right. you know, they're, you know, it was like a long weekend at Intel. And now we have this advice that hit yesterday <laughs> telling every, and I just saw announcements. People are, are tweeting me that Dell, they're getting news from, from Dell saying back, go, go back to a previous BIOS. So, so I think what, what will ultimately happen is we will eventually get new firmware, which is solid. And everyone should either update again or update for the first time at that point. But given the fact that what we have now is flaky, if you are concerned, you could certainly go back to a previous BIOS. I know that generally when you go to the firmware and BIOS pages, you know, you're, you're able to say, oh, look, here's the earlier one and the one before that and the one before that. You could choose you know, the one before last week and 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 have a firmware which you know is going to be solid because it, it, it comes along with the BIOS. My my feeling is if there isn't a problem, stay where essentially if if everything's fine, stay where you are. If systems have become unstable, back out. And in all cases, we'll wait till the dust settles, till everybody agrees that this problem has been solved. And then the good news is any manufacturer who just gave us a BIOS and firmware update two weeks ago will certainly still be around to fix the one that they gave us two weeks ago with something that is, you know, known to be more solid moving forward. Um, and boy, it'd be fun from a, again, from an engineering standpoint to get some clarity into what is all, what is all going on. How is like, you know, <laughs> it's just difficult to understand how we you know, like from an engineering standpoint, what have they done that causes more reboots than usual? Wow. Anyway, so that's where we are.